We're going to look at factoring polynomials using the sum and difference of two cubes. You will need your flip book for these. Okay, the first thing, in the first column of your flip book, you should see an a cubed plus b cubed. This is called the sum of two cubes because we have a plus sign, which indicates we have a sum, and then the two cubes means we have a quantity to the third power and a second quantity to the third power. So in your flip books, on the a cubed plus b cubed tab, you need to write this formula down because this is how we're going to factor the sum of two cubes. Once you get that formula down, go ahead and put the following example above it. So we're going to take 125 plus 8x cubed. Now just like, like with all the other examples we've done, we are going to break this down so that it looks like a cubed. So I'm going to have to have it as some quantity cubed plus another quantity cubed. Now on your little cheat sheets that we've been using for perfect squares, we're going to use that same sheet for perfect cubes. Um, instead of looking in the x squared column, look in the x cubed column. And when you look there, you should see the numbers 8, 27, 64, 125. Those are our perfect cubes, meaning we can break them down. So if I have 125 and you look on your little cheat sheet, you'll see that 125 is really 5 cubed. And then the 8x cubed, well to get 8 I have to take 2 cubed and to get x cubed I would have to take x. So now I've got it written out as 5 cubed plus 2x cubed. That means 5 is my a and 2x is my b. Now when I go to factor this, I can follow my pattern that says I take a plus b, so I'm going to have 5 plus 2x times a squared, so I'm going to have 5 squared minus a times b, so I'm going to have to have 5 times 2x plus b squared, so I'm going to have 2x squared. Then I can go back and I can simplify the second part that's in the parentheses out. So I'm going to leave my 5 plus 2x alone. And then my 5 squared I'm going to put in is 25. My 5 times 2 times x will turn into minus the 10x. And then my 2x squared will be 4x squared. And then this will be factored. So any time that you notice you have a quantity cubed plus another quantity cubed, when we need to factor it, it's going to factor into this special pattern here. Okay, another one that you should have in your two column is the difference of two cubes. So you should have a cubed minus b cubed written down on one of the flaps. Go ahead and copy this formula on that tab because this is going to be the formula we use for factoring those. Once you have that formula written down, we are going to do an example. So go ahead and put this example in your flip book, and it's going to be 64x to the 6th minus 27y to the 3rd. Okay, now keep in mind you always want to check if you can pull out a common factor. And as I look at these, I can't because I, 64 and 27 don't have anything in common. And x to the 6th and y to the 3rd don't either. So what I need to do is I need to break this down into cubes. Now, at first glance, you might not think that the 64x to the 6th is a cube because our exponent right here with the x is a 6 instead of a 3. But keep in mind our rules of exponents I can, since um, 6 is a multiple of 3, I can do some multiplication to get x to the 6th. So let's start with the 64. So look on your flip books and what is it that we need to take cubed to get a 64? And from your list you should see that that is a 4. And now you've got to think, x to the 6th, what do I cube to get x to the 6th? Well now think back to our rules of exponents. I have to have x to some power raised to the third power. 
Now when we have a power of a power, we multiply exponents. So you have to ask yourself three times what power would give me a 6. Well, that would have to be a 2. So it's really 4x squared that I need to be cubed. Then I go over to my 27y cubed, and I look at my cheat sheet to figure out what's what can I cube to get 27. Well, that would be 3. And then what can I cube to get y cubed? That would be y. So now I've got my a to be 4x squared, and my b is 3y. I can follow the pattern now from our formula. It says we take a minus b. So I'm going to have 4x squared minus 3y. And then I have to take a squared. So I'll have 4x squared squared plus a times b would be 4x squared times 3y, and then plus b squared. Well, my b squared would be 3y squared. Notice how I'm putting the a in parentheses when I have to square it, and the b in parentheses when I have to square it. That's just to make sure I don't make any mistakes when I go back and simplify. So I'm going to leave my front part alone. 4x squared minus 3y stays. And then 4x squared squared, well, I've got to give a square to both the 4 and the x squared. So it's going to become 16x to the 4th. Then this middle term, this 4x squared 3y, I can multiply my 4 and my 3 together to get a 12. And then my x squared and my y, I can't combine them because they don't have the same base. I can't combine x's and y's. So I'm just going to leave it as x squared y. And then the last one, my 3y squared. Well, the 3 gets squared and the y gets squared, so I'm going to have 9y squared. And that would be my answer for that piece. Here's our first set of practice problems. Now, before I even start factoring, there's a few things I look at so I know which direction I want to go. I notice that this factoring problem only has two terms, so I'm going to first check my two-term shortcuts. Next thing, it's a minus sign. Well, I've got two options for minus signs. I have a squared minus b squared, and I have a cubed minus b cubed. Now, the key here is that it's x cubed, so that tells me I'm probably going to be using the a cubed minus b cubed shortcut. Now I want to check, can I pull anything out of the 125 x cubed minus 8? And as I look at that, there isn't anything I can pull out, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it as two quantities cubed. Well, to get 125, I need a 5. To get x cubed, I need an x. Then if I jump over here to the 8, to get an 8, I need a 2 cubed. You can get all those numbers from your little cheat sheets. Then I'm going to follow my pattern now that I have it written in terms of a and b. And my pattern says that I take a minus b. So I'm going to have 5x minus 2, and then I take a squared. So I will have 5x, that whole quantity, squared. Then I have to add a times b, so I'm going to have 5x times 2, and then I'm going to have to add b squared. So I would have 2 squared here. When I simplify that all out, I'm going to leave my 5x minus 2, and then 5x squared. The 5 gets squared and the x gets squared, so I'm going to have 25x squared. 5 times x times 2 is 10x, and 2 squared is 4. So when I factor this one out as far as possible, this is what I'm left with. Next one. I have 16t cubed plus 54. Again, I notice I only have two terms, so I'm going to be using the shortcuts in that first column. This time I have a plus sign. The only shortcut I have that has a plus sign is a cubed plus b cubed. So I'm going to see if I can get it to fit that pattern. Now as I look at these, I notice that I can pull a 2 out. They're both even numbers, so I'm going to set that 2 out in front here. And when I do that, I'm going to be left with 8t cubed plus 27. Now I can go ahead and rewrite that 8t cubed plus 27 as two quantities cubed. So to get the 8, I need 2 cubed. To get t cubed, I need t. 
and to get 27 I need a 3. Now the 2 that we pulled out, it doesn't go away, it still just sits up here in the front. So when I factor this, I'm going to keep that 2 out in front. And then I'm going to follow my difference of, or my sum of 2 cubes, which says I take a plus b. So I'm going to have 2t plus 3. And then I take a squared, so I'm going to have 2t squared. Then I have to subtract a b. So I'm going to subtract 2t times 3. Then I have to add the b squared. So right now all I'm doing is filling in the a's and b's to my pattern from my flipbook. Go back and 2t squared, I need to square the 2 and the t. So I get 4t squared. 2 times t times 3 is 6t, and that 3 squared is 9. So that would be my completely factored answer. Okay, here's four practice problems for you to try. Now notice it says that you can use any method to factor these. These aren't going to all be the two shortcuts we learned today. You can use any anything in your flipbooks that you have. So go ahead and give these a shot and see what you come up with. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, the first one. As I looked at the three term one, it didn't appear to follow any patterns, so I just regular factored it. I couldn't pull any terms out. So I ended up with 3x plus 1 and x minus 5. The top one on the right side, when I looked at that, I noticed I had two terms. I had a minus sign, so that means it could have been a squared minus b squared, or it could have been a cubed minus b cubed. I was going to go with the a squared minus b squared one because I had a squared there. Then I noticed I could pull out a 4, so I pulled this 4 out here and set it out in front, and then I was left with x squared minus 4. I rewrote that as x quantity squared minus 2 squared, and then I had my a and my b and I just followed my pattern of a plus b and a minus b. Notice that 4 that I pulled out is still sitting out here in the front. Third one. This one, two terms, a minus sign, and I have an x cubed here, so that's a pretty good hint. It's going to be the a cubed minus b cubed pattern. I then pulled out a 3, and I was left with x cubed minus 27. Then I rewrote it as x cubed and 3 cubed. Once I had it written in terms of a and b, I plugged it into my pattern, and this is what I got right here. And the last one. Now the last one was three terms, and when I looked at that, I noticed I had 4x squared in front and a 9 in the back, so that made me wonder if it was going to be the perfect square trinomial. So what I had to check was this middle term, 2 times a times b. So when I rewrote that 4x squared into 2x squared, and the 9 into 3, I then took 2 times 2x times 3, that turned out to be 12x, which is exactly what I needed, so that told me it did follow that pattern of a perfect square trinomial. So I knew it had to be 2x plus 3 quantity squared. Okay, here's two problems for you to try. Go ahead and get these factored as far as you can using any method and then bring them to class with you.